Hallelujah. 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 Hey! I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Let's praise him like we mean it. Let's praise him like we mean it. Let's praise him like he deserves it. Let's praise him like he's doing. Come on, somebody. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody didn't wake, it up, wake up this morning. But as long as I have, come on, breath in my lungs, I'm going to magnify his name. Come on, saints. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Because he's worthy. My God. Hey, if, if, listen, listen. If you have fingers, just do this. Hallelujah. Come on now. If you got some legs underneath your waist, just, just shake it out. Listen to what I'm saying. It's, if it had not been for God, hallelujah. As long as I'm in this body, I'm going to use it. Oh. To praise the Lord. I don't care if I have one arm. I'm going to praise him like this. Hey, I don't care if I didn't have a stroke in one side of my face. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless his name. Because I still got time. I still got time. I still got time. Time is a, bless, a blessing, not a cursing. It's a blessing. Hallelujah. Go with me. I'm going to play around with the Bible today. I'm going to play, I'm going to play around with the Bible today. Go with me to Genesis chapter 2, and I'm going to skip around in chapter 3. But I want you to meet me there um, in verse 25. Genesis chapter 2, verse 25, and then I'm going to go to chapter 3. This is unscripted. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit have his way. I got to be obedient because he's faithful. I don't know who I'm talking to, but no matter who you are or where you are in life, hallelujah, you may not be ready, but he is. You may not believe in yourself, but he does. And God is always faithful. Listen, he may not show up when you want to, but hear me, saints. Oh, I feel the anointing. He's always on time. Always. Go with me to Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. Then I'm going to skip over into chapter 3. Go with me. In Genesis chapter 2, I'm reading from the New King James Version here. It says, And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now go to Genesis chapter 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then go to verse, Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. Then the Bible says, then, then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. So they were naked and unashamed in chapter 3. Now they can see that they are naked. And they are looking for some clothes to put on. Now I want you to, now verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence, the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. In verse 11, he says, he said, who told you that you were naked? Who told you? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? 
Now I want you to skip all the way down. Hallelujah. And read verse 21 here. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. He made tunics of skin and clothed them. Today I want to talk to you about, we've been talking all month long for the last four weeks about back to the garden. Oh. But today I want to talk to you about, this is just the Spirit just giving it to me. This is the big setup. He set you up to cover you. Amen. I want to talk to you about how he set you up for his covering. Amen. Come on, Holy Spirit. Bow with me. Father, in the name of Jesus for these next few moments, God, you have given me courage, faith to know that you always show up. Now, God, we invite you into this place to show up and show out. Your people needs a word from you right now. It can't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow may not come, but right now, God, we need your word. I'm asking you to hide me behind your cross, Father. I've exhausted all my options. My first and last resort is you. Now have your way. Lord, we invite you into this building. We invite you into this sanctuary. We invite you into this space. And Lord, I pray that you break up the soil in your people's heart and mind so that they may be able to receive this seed that you are given. We glorify you. We're thankful. We're in great anticipation of what you're about to do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Say amen. Say amen. Touch, listen, touch your neighbor next to you. I, listen, listen, I dare you to hug somebody next to you and tell them you love them. You may not see them again. You may not see them again. But hug them like you won't see them again. Tell them you love them. Tell them you love them. Tell them you love them. Mm, mm, mm. They were naked and not ashamed. Naked and not ashamed. A covering, hallelujah, a covering means to be shielded from something. Yes, it it's, a, it's a covering. Yes, it like, like a raincoat is covering you or protecting you from, a rain, from rain. It's a covering. What's my covering? It's a shield. It's protection. It's protecting me from being attacked. I'm, I have coverage. I'm insured. We have coverage like life insurance is coverage. Health insurance is coverage. Insurance is coverage. It's covering you financially, hallelujah, so that if you get, when you get into an accident, you are financially covered. Hallelujah. Coverage, shielded, protection. We have that same coverage, hallelujah, when we find ourselves in a jam or in trouble spiritually. We're covered by the blood of Jesus. He's covered us, hallelujah, with his blood. He sacrificed his life so that we can be insured, covered by his blood. Is anybody in that, come on somebody, anybody in the house covered by the blood of Jesus? Come on somebody, come on, come on. Is anybody covered by the lamb? We learn that when God creates Adam and Eve, hallelujah, 
Adam screams out, says, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, you shall be called woman. Therefore, shall a man leave from his mother and father and cleave yes. ha, to his wife. Cleave, become one with his wife, become one. There's an order. There's a structure yeah. of the way God does it. He, God, ex, he explains it through the Apostle Paul, hallelujah, in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 11. He explains it. He says that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of, of, of woman is man. There is an order. Pastor, where are you getting at? What I'm saying is your coverage is like the roof on your house. If you don't have no head, you have no coverage. There's a lot of people that's walking around with no head, with no insurance. <laughs> but he's a blessed assurance. Yes. And they were unashamed, and the Bible said that they were naked. They, they, they were naked. They... <sighs> I got to play around. They were naked. They were naked and unashamed because they were one. Come here, honey. Come here, honey. Come here. See, the way that God created it, come here, boo-boo. Come here, boo-boo. Hallelujah. I want them to see. The way that God created it, because God is my head, this is the order. I'm her head. I'm her covering. So I don't mind when there's attack coming against my wife. If there's attack coming against your husband, I don't mind covering her and shielding her. Because the Bible says, husbands, love your wives as Jesus loved the church and gave myself for her. I, uh -uh, uh -uh, honey, I want you to live so I'll take the blow. I'm your covering. Hallelujah. Thank you, honey. Boy, you so fine. There is a God somewhere. This is why Jesus says, he says in the parable that, that, that the shepherd will leave the 99 for the one. Why? Because I'm the covering. I'm the protection. I'm the one that protects you. Hallelujah. From the attacks. And I'm coming for you because I love you and I'm your protection because you're naked. Hallelujah. You're naked and you're alone. And it, it's not good for man to be alone. And when you're alone, you're without me and I'm coming for you. So you're not alone. Without God, you're by yourself. You are alone, and you're naked, and you're ashamed, and you're scared, and you can't be real. Come on, come on. But when you have God covering you, it doesn't matter what, what you convey to God. He's got you covered, baby. Unashamed. Covered. In the Bible, in the Bible, we read here, The tension of this story comes in when, when Eve is being tempted by the devil. The Bible says a serpent. When you hear serpent, you think of some reptile thing crawling on the ground. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. This was an angel, a beautiful angel. Let me, let me explain something to you. This angel is competing with you, covering. You're supposed to be covered and have a covering. This thing is competing against your covering. How do you know that, Pastor? Somebody get me Ezekiel 28. Give me verse 14. Somebody get it for me. Somebody, if we have a mic around here to hop. If we don't have one, give me a mic to hop. Just get me one. Give me, a, give me a mic. I need this thing to hop. Give me Ezekiel. Somebody give me Ezekiel 28. When you got it, just raise your hand. I'm getting 28. I want you to read it loud. 
I, I, listen, Ezekiel 28, 14, what does it say? You were anointed as a guardian. No, 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 no. You got to get louder than that. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. Stop right there. Stand up, because you're preaching today. I need you to say that louder and preach it. That it, 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 read that again. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. Stop right there. Keep that mic right there with you. He was ordained. He was created as a guardian angel. A guardian is one that covers you. Yeah. Yeah. Ha! Yeah. How can Adam compete with? Adam was competing with something that was created to guard. This is why you got to watch the people who's in your life that's trying to guard you, that's trying to cover you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to your church? Because they'll try to draw you out. There's two type of individuals that are in your life that's trying to cover you. And I'm going to try, I'm going to explain to you the people that's in your life that's trying to cover you, that's of God, and the people that's trying to cover you, that's of the devil. Follow me. Follow me. Anyone that's in your life that's anxious, have a seat. I'm going to call on you again. I, the Holy Spirit just doing what he do. I'm going to let him do. An individual that's in your life that's trying to cover you, hallelujah, and they draw you away from the word of God, that's the enemy. You can't allow those type of individuals to cover you. They can't. They're not in your lives to cover you. They're in your lives to set your tail up. Yeah. Now, remember what I titled this message, The Big Setup. Stay there. That individual you talk to, you confess to, you confide in, and your business is all out in the street. They ain't covering you. The people that cover you are covering you from the attacks. Yeah. You call them, you can fire them. Hey, man, my man, I don't like the way my man is treating me. Oh, you should, girl, you should leave him, cheat on him. That's the enemy. Yeah. They're not leading you to the word. They're leading you from the word. Yeah. Hey, man, you know, I don't know what's going on with my lady. Hey, man, listen, man, why don't we just get high and drunk tonight, baby? You know what we used to do. You know what I mean? Let's do what we do. That's not God. Those people aren't covering you. They're exposing you. Yes. The individual that's in your life that is covering you is always trying to lead you back to the word. Pastor, I don't know, but, 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 but my man, my man ain't acting right. Well, what does the Lord say? What does the Bible say? What does your pastor say? But, I, but I, you know what, I'm having, ma I'm having anxiety, I'm having anxiety attacks, and I don't know what to do. Baby, you know what, get down on your knees right now. Come on, hold, come on, come on, and let's pray, girl. That's it. Let's pray right now. We are That's it. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. He was, comp Adam was competing against an angel who was built to cover. He was a guardian angel. And understand the gifts are not give, given without repentance. So even though that the devil was casted out of heaven, he didn't lose his gifts, baby. You think he left? He lost his gifts. He didn't lose his gifts. You don't lose your gifts. That's why I told you a couple weeks ago, stop following them for their gifts. And follow them for the fruit. What you produce. What you produce. Not how good you sing, not how good you preach, because what I'm doing right now is easy because it's in me. It's my fruit. It's what I do. Hallelujah. And this is what he's up against. And the Bible says that Eve eats from the tree of knowledge. Yeah, I know the story. If you've been here the last, go back and listen. I can't go through it. Go back and listen to the whole series. She eats from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The big setup. Ooh. And the Bible says she then gives it to her husband. And the Bible says they, they could see. 
and, and they saw that they were naked. They were able to see now that they're naked, they can see. Oh, y'all don't get this yet. Oh, y'all don't get it. Now I recognize at first we were covering one another. Now that we can see that we're both naked. Come here, baby. Before, give me that. Before we were covering one another. But because of disobedience, because of the shame, watch this. Boom. Now we're, oh, we're naked. We're not one anymore. I see, I now, I can now judge you for your, I'm no longer covering your mess. I'm now, you're, that's right, now your mess is exposed. I can see yours and you can see mine. We can kill each other. Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. We can kill each other now. Y'all don't get it. With my, my brother and I, my brother and I, Christian, you, you're listening now, I know. With my brother and I, we used to fight all the time. Every day we fight. I kick his butt. Every day I kick his butt. One day, we were in high school, and he was Mr. Missouri football player, big time. No joke athlete. We too big for all this. We used to always fight, but our rule was never punch each other in the face. Don't punch me in the face. That was our rule. We, we get down here in the body, never punch in the face. I'm too grown for that now. I'm in high school. He's too big for that. We got into a tussle. I gave him one in the face. Boom. Dropped him. And then he got up. He grabbed a, a, a vase and threw it at my head, and it hit the wall, and it broke. And at that moment, hear me, saints, we were naked because we realized at this age, we can kill each other. Yeah. Come on. We're naked. We're naked now. You can kill me, dude. Come on, somebody. Is there anybody that's been in a relationship and y'all was besties? And I, hey, look, you know all my stuff. You know all my stuff. But we got into a fight or an argument. Uh-oh. I'm, that individual now is a threat because you know my stuff because once you was my dude come here stand up once you was my guy and you covered me and I covered you don't worry dog I know your issues I know you still dealing with whatever but don't worry about that right, right. now we got to an argument and we cool on each other uh oh you could kill me Pepsi this is why most of us, when we get into new relationships, we don't expose ourselves. We don't keep it real. How's it go, Wally? We don't keep it real. We don't keep it real because we can't afford to put ourselves in a situation where you have the ability to kill me. But I'm here to tell you, saints, hallelujah, no devil in hell or on earth can kill you. The Bible says no weapon born against you can prosper. That's right, that's right. It cannot kill you. No matter what he throws your way. The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walketh not after flesh. Not the flesh, but the spirit. You got to walk after the Spirit. Yeah. Now they're naked and ashamed. Why you say it, Pastor? Pat? The Bible don't say they're ashamed. The Bible tells me that when they found out they were naked, they started creating their own coverings. Yeah. They were no longer covered under God's coverage plan. Look, oh my God. I said God has a, has a coverage. He has a life insurance policy, a coverage and sin is not covered under his grace. Y'all yeah. don't believe me. Who got the mic? Give me uh give me give me Romans 6. Listen to this. Before she gets that. Hear what I'm saying. Grace is time. 
It is his extension of time to be able to turn back to him. Do you follow me? That's his grace. Grace is time. It is time that if we find ourselves out of his plan, his plan, his plan is still there for us to jump back in the plan freely. All it takes is your repentance. But, it, but sin is not covered in the plan. Saints, I ain't gonna, sin is not covered in the plan. Read the Bible. Give, give me Romans 6. Just read verse 4. Verse 1. What shall we say then? Whoa, 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 whoa. Turn that mic up. Stand up, preacher. What shall we say then? Uh-huh. Shall we continue in sin that uh -huh. grace may abound? Stop right there. Can we continue in sin that grace will abound? That, that grace will continue? That grace is extended? What does the Bible say? God forbid. God forbid. No. No. <laughs> That's not me. That's the Bible. God forbids it. Talk to me about the Bible. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? <laughs> Stop right there. So have a seat. Have, have a seat. We're dead to it. Grace, being in Christ Jesus, we are now dead to sin Come on, and we live in Him. Our sinful nature is dead. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. You are a new creator. You are a new creature. You are a new creature. I said, saints, you are a new creature. You're not that old individual that they, they trying to blame you for or get you for. This is why you can create new relationships because they cannot kill you from what happened in the past. Why? Because God had already paid. He's paid for that price that you can't. So the Bible says, Y'all all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that the Lord, that, that, hallelujah, let me just read the Bible. Let me just read the Bible. The Bible says, and the man and his wife heard the sound. Oh, my God. He heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. He heard, they heard the sound. In some versions, if you read the King James Version, it says he heard his voice. In some versions, it says he heard, they heard his voice. And they hid from God's presence. They, they hid from God's word. Here, this is important because they didn't want to repent. God's word made... Let me put this down. God's Word made itself available to them. And instead of them going to the Word, being drawn to the Word, they were drawn away from the Word. They were drawn away from the Word. This is what sin does. It draws you away from the Lord. And they were no longer covered under the coverage. So what, what is our... So he gets scared. And, and the Bible says that God says... Adam, where are you, dude? I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Lord is saying, where are you? You've been away from me all this time. Where are you? And I'm here to tell you something. When you find yourself in sin, we don't have a God that will wait back and just wait on you. Oh, my God. You guys don't know this. Hear what I'm saying. Our God will not wait on you. We serve a God that's coming to get you. Yeah. David said, listen, if I ascend into the heavens, there you are. If I make my bed in hell, there you are. Yeah. God will come and get who he protects, who he covers, because you are his. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And they hid from him because they mischaracterized him. 
they don't understand the nature of God because God nature loves them so much, he's willing to do whatever it takes to protect them, even themselves. Let me get through this message. God loves you so much, he will even protect you from his word. Oh, I ain't get no amens. He killed, the, he killed his son. He killed the, the logos hung on the cross for you. So the very word that was against you, God sacrificed. That's how much he loves you. He's coming for you. He's coming to save you and cover you. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's coming to cover you and save you. He was afraid. It's reminiscent. It's reminiscent of Matthew 25's gospel when the man buries his gift, his one bag of gold. He buries it. And when, when, the, when the rich man comes back in to get a return on his investment, he says, he says, I, I was afraid because I know that you are a man that likes to reap where you don't sow. I know that you demand this of me, but I didn't believe in myself. I was more afraid of your wrath than your nature. And because I was afraid of your wrath, it caused me to bury your gift. But understand, God isn't like that. I'm in mediums now. <laughs> That's a weight loss competition joke. I'm in mediums now. I want to show you something in the Bible that's going to wreck your mind, but I need you to understand that I want to show you the love of God. Is there any way you can turn me down a little bit on the speakers? Just a little bit. I'm going to show you God's nature and how he set us up. How the devil thought the joke was on us. But really the joke was on the devil. And God set us up to be covered. So that we can be naked and free and under his covering. Can I show you this? Go on your Bibles with me. Go to Genesis chapter 2. I want to show you, I want to show this to you, directed under the Holy Spirit. And I want you to, I want you to go to verse, go to verse 17. Somebody, uh, you got that mic still? You about to preach today, so I want you to preach hard. Reach out. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Watch this. God gives man instructions. There, there's no gray in that instructions. It's if you do this, you dead. You dead. I want to show you something. Read the next verse. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. Stop right there. I want you to see this word because I need to sell you on this. I've got to sell it to you. That the only way to be fruitful and multiply, nobody can do it alone. Also, you cannot do it without God. Being without God means being alone. So now when you see, what does it say after that, that colon? I will make him and help me for him. Stop right there. I'll make him a helpmate. I need somebody to receive right now that that helpmate is a foreshadowing 
of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says first natural, then spiritual. This is why we men have to honor our women because God gave the woman to us to extend mankind. I'm going to show you. Woo, this is so good to me. So now watch. This was a setup. Why was it set up, Pastor? Because God knows the beginning from the ending, the ending from the beginning. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He already knew the story. He knew how Satan was going to come in and try to mess up his plan. But watch how God sets him up. Go to Genesis chapter 3. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? This is what I want you to understand. When God comes to Adam, God comes to Adam, he comes after him. He asks, where are you? Have you eaten from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which I told you not to eat from? And instead of Adam repenting, I need you to understand that Adam could have repented right there. Come on. Come on. What, pastor, no way. God's the judge. Well, he can't go against his word. He killed. He had his word die on a tree. Come on, come on. Is anybody following me? Yes. Yes. Adam could have repented when the word offered itself to him. But he decided not to receive the word or the opportunity to repent. He decided in his shame, when you're in shame, you blame. Touch your neighbor and say, when I'm in shame, I blame. And when he began to blame, first he blames God, God the woman that you gave me. You, it ain't my fault, but yo, you gave me this woman. So he blames God and blames the woman. The Lord went, goes to the woman, says, what have you done? She, in like fashion, blames the serpent. Because understand, the person that you're covering is an echo of you. So if you're blaming, they blame it. But watch, but watch God's grace. I'm going to share this with you, and I want Perlissa to read this. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> Let me take my time. God never curses man or the woman. He curses the serpent and the ground. Yeah. Ah, I need you to, I just need you to understand God's character, his love for you. He never curses you. He is, even though that, that you blame God, he still spares you the cursing. You might get kicked out, but you ain't going to get cursed. You might be put out, but there ain't no punctuation to that. There's a continuation, not a punctuation. So watch how God sets this up because understand, I need, I need you to see this. I need you to see it. God, when man sinned, Man lost covering, which means that we lost God's influence in the earth. On man. He didn't have influence in the earth, so he needed something to come back into the earth. Woman, what did he, what does he say in Genesis chapter 3? Uh, verse 14. Verse 14. 14. No, 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 no. Verse 15. 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. I need you to hear me. This is a prophecy. 
I need you to see how the Satan, how Satan was set up. Satan thought he was setting up man, but God had already put him. God upgraded her suit. Women don't have seed. God ups. <sighs> Come on. He upgraded her suit. And he says, and I will put enmity. That means war. The woman would be in constant conflict with the devil. And between your seed, he's talking to the serpent, between the, serp, the, the seed of the devil and the, and the seed of the woman. And he, and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. That means that Jesus Christ will crush the head of the serpent, but, but Christ's heel will be bruised from stomping it. I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you learn to know whose you are, you won't just sit there. You will learn to use your heel and stump the devil where he belongs, underneath your feet. You can have a seat. Touch your neighbor and say, you were, you were made for his covering. God wants you naked. God wants you naked. You were made for his covering. I'm close. I'm, I'm, I'm landing. I'm landing. I'm landing. Jesus Christ is on the cross after being whipped, spit on, lied on, And he's up on the cross, nailed, suffering, bleeding with some, some, some crown that's thorns in it, crushing his, his head. Blood is bleeding out. And the Bible says, then a spear was casted into his side to make sure he was dead. Just to make sure he was dead. And blood and water came out. Some versions, some gospel says, then there was an earthquake, and the veil was rent. Oh, the earthly veil was rent. Oh, they don't get this. The earthly veil was rent and, and split because it was not meant to cover us. What was meant to cover us? was the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why he came for you and died for you so that you could be covered by him and not covered by that veil. Give me that music. Saints, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're no longer alone. But He, he gives us a, a gift. It's called the Helper. The Holy Spirit. And that Helper, that foreshadowing that you saw with the woman, was God's way back into the earth. The Holy Spirit is God's way back into you. And if God's Holy Spirit is in you, you're covered. You're covered. for his 
covering. You were set up. Do you see the setup? No matter what you've done, there's no reason to be shamed. They all went to the cross. There's no reason to feel guilt. suffer a curse so that he could if the Lord is pulling on your heart straight to restore your relationship back this is a restoration message to restore your relationship back with him remember this he cannot cover you toiling and overworking to try to get rich but everything's in the garden it's easy all you gotta do is keep it and cultivate it feed a sheep will you come will you come if there's anybody who isn't saved and wants to give their life back to Jesus Christ, will you come? We want to pray the prayer of salvation for you. If you're somebody that's been exposed and you're afraid, will you come? I need you to understand what we're doing up here is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. <laughs> 